Pastor Bill Evans here, uh, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, working with Chet TV, and thankful for Chet TV for the opportunity to put messages on to encourage people at home, locked down under COVID or just locked down in the hospital and whatever. I sure miss my ministry at the hospital, seeing folks. So hopefully you'll be encouraged with our messages we share. Uh, today I want to leave a message, I share a message with you. I've preached in my own church, but it's about lions and men. And I, I did some thinking on, and what I found was that of all the human interactions with animals in the Bible, the ones with lions come up with the strangest outcomes. And uh, so I looked at that, and I, I've called it Lessons of Lions and Men. And so if I just have your attention for that for a few moments this morning, uh, we would just consider that. Um, the, the, just the weird things that happen, and, and just one walks through the scriptures, and I uh, would like to walk through there and see the different things, the approaches that God has. And, and some of them are, are very famous ones, and other ones are not so famous. Uh, so we'll consider those just briefly if we uh, can together in this time. Uh, the first thing I want to find is a story uh, about a man who was duped. He was a prophet of God. In 1 Kings chapter 13, you can read the lessons for yourself. And he, he was duped because God told him to go to, uh, I think, the, the land of uh, where the king was, the king of Aram. I don't know fully what uh, the nation that was tied in with the Philistines, I suppose. But he had a job to go and make a pronouncement from God about uh, what was going to happen. And uh, so, but God made very specific orders for him. You go, you make this announcement to the king, you do not stop and have coffee with any friend or anybody, and you come home. And don't even come home the same way that you went. That was the law written down for him or spoken to him, and he understood from God what the command was. So he went and he did, just as he was told. And some young men heard him talking what he'd done to the king of Aram and how things had worked out. And they told their dad. And their dad was an old prophet. And for why, we don't know, but this old prophet says, well, get my donkey saddled, and he rides after this guy, found out where you're staying, rides after him and catches him and said, you the man that was sent by God to the king of Aram? He said, I was. And he says, well, listen, I'm a prophet too, and I got a message from the angel of God, and he told me to tell you to come on home and have tea with me and visit with me. And so the guy looked and kind of thought, well, I guess if you're an older prophet and you were told that, then he went home and he had supper with the guy. And then the time comes to go the next morning or stayed overnight, wherever next morning he saddles up a donkey and he leaves. And then this is what happens. He's riding down the road on his donkey and out jumps a lion. Okay, well that's not too awful strange. A lion would jump out and it attacks the man and kills him. It's not after the donkey, but it kills the man. And he's dead and he's laying there on the road. And the Bible says in, in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 24, it says, and so the lion attacked him, and he was dead on the road, and the donkey is standing beside the dead man on the road, and the lion standing there too. Well, how's that for weird? But the principle is, God told the man, do this simple thing. And the man, well, this other guy said he, he had a, a vision. God says, you don't listen to visions or whatever like this, you listen to me. And if I say, you do. And he was killed for that simple act. I don't think he didn't go to heaven. But my passage I read in, in, in uh, communion all the time, for, for this cause, many abuse things, and they sleep, and they just die, seems to be the idea. A strange lesson, disobedience can bring harm. A lion showed that story. Daniel chapter 6 is the story of a man named Daniel. Everybody knows the story of Daniel and the lion's den. This man, he uh, was a man of God. He was sent to the land of the Babylonians there and uh, became famous because he loved God and God put him for forward. And the, he got ahead of other guys, it seems. They said, the only way we can get this guy Daniel in trouble is make something between him and his God. Watch for something. Well, they noticed that Daniel was a man of prayer. Our song that we sing for the children is, Daniel was a man of prayer. Daily he prayed three times. Even then they had him cast in a den of lions. Even then in the den, fear could not alarm him. God had shut the lion's mouth so they could not harm him. So that's the story that we know. But here was, uh, these guys had this plan. And so they go to the king and they say, King, we need to have a law in our land for 30 days, one month. Nobody can pray to anybody but to you. Well, the king's full of himself. He likes himself. The laws of the Medes and the Persians were the king was like a god. If he made a law, you could never change it because that would mean you weren't like a god. So yeah, that's sort of the rules they had. And so they made a law that nobody could pray to anybody but to the king for 30 days. So he signs it in the thing, puts a seal on it. There he is. This is the law. 
And all of a sudden, hey, next day they go, Daniel, this man, um, is this guy Daniel, this king that you have in place, he's praying three times a day. We got video of it. We got video of it. And uh, here it is. We've been texting each other, and we, we've caught him. We're watching him do this. And here it is. He's praying three times a day. Oh, king, you know what the law says. Bring in Daniel, and he has to put Daniel in the lion's den. He says, Daniel, your God will hopefully take care of you in the king's mind. And then we go on as you read the rest of the story there, you find the king has a real restless night. He can't sleep. Nobody's entertaining him, whatever. He's not YouTube and he's not watching television. He's not watching Chet TV and Pastor Bill preaching. He's just doing nothing. He's worried about his friend Daniel in the den. In the morning, he gets up first light and he runs to the grave and he says to the tomb where the lions are, and he says, Oh, Daniel, is your God able to save you? And David, uh, Daniel said, Yes, God. Yes, king. Oh, king. I'm here and I'm well. My God has shut the lion's mouth, and they didn't harm me. And so those lions, in the lion's they didn't bother Daniel. They weren't hungry. They were fed other people, other animals, threw an old something in there, whatever. They weren't hungry. Well, no, God says, he says, God says, he shut their mouth. Because right after this happened, the people who led and the thing against Daniel with the king, king says, throw them in. And they were thrown in there, and they didn't hardly hit the ground. They were dead, and their bones were broken. And the lions killed them as an act of judgment. Daniel said to the king, he says, I'm glad just to let you know, O God, O king, that I have no crime against you in me. There's no crime against me, uh, against you in me. And so there was. And there was two cases where, Dan, where lions prevailed in judgment against people. The next one I want to go on to here is that where lions failed in dining. And there's an interesting one where, uh, where they failed in dining. And um, there was, uh, and we, we all know the story of David and Goliath. But you know, there's a lion involved in the story of David and Goliath. Because before David went down to the camp, and we find that David was a very responsible person. Young people pay attention to that. He was a very responsible person. As a young man, he was a shepherd looking after sheep. And his dad wants him to go check out the army and take some cheese and everything to the brothers fighting in the army. And he says, and the scripture says very plainly, David left his sheep with, with a, a caretaker. That's responsibility. And when he gets down to the camp and he wants the, the battles going on over the armies lined up over there and they're going rah rah sis boom ah, let's go beat the Philistines. They're doing all that. He wants to go there. He leaves the baggage with somebody. Very responsible lessons. But the story of Daniel, he gets before the king. He says, what's going to happen to the man who, who kills this Goliath? And they say, well, he gets to the hand of the daughter and you get to be son-in-law to the king. And so he um, uh, takes this and um, uh, says, well, that's a pretty good deal. And so he says, here, uh, let me talk to the king. And he gets in front of, of uh, the king, uh, Saul. And, and he says, you know, I, I'll take this Goliath on. I guess somebody's got to shut his mouth. I'll do it. And he says, how could you do that? You're just a lad. And he said this. He said, you know, I was shepherd looking after my father's sheep. A lion came one day and tried to take a lamb. He took a lamb and he was starting to run off. I run after him and I grabbed him by the beard and I killed him. I killed the lion. And it dropped the sheep. And he said, you know what? That happened to a bear as well. He says, because I face lion and I face bear, I'm not afraid of this man, Goliath. I'll go out and deal with him. And so the lion gave David courage. When we face struggles in life and struggles that we go through, lions and bears and everything that seems to go wrong, they make us strong for something that can be ahead. Whatever, we used to have old saying, the senior folk have that, whatever don't kill you just makes you stronger. And David faced the lion and the bear and won. And now he says, I'm not afraid of some man. And he went out there and he slew Goliath. Because he says to Goliath, I come to you in the name of the living God. You come with spears and stones and with sticks or whatever, and your spear and your shield or whatever, I come to you in the name of the living God. And he's got a stone in a sling. And he took five stones, but he used one to knock him in the head. Somebody said, in the cocoa between the lamps, and down he went. So that was the story there of um, David uh, uh, with his lion story that he had. And there's other stories you can find in the scriptures. And... Um, and what? But there's uh, that one. Uh, one other one that's important, we'll close it down quickly here, is in Revelation chapter 5. I want to read a couple of verses there. Because what happens is, uh, this, the book of Revelation is a very interesting book. I, I don't find it a book of fear. Uh, somebody said, the Gospels say come. The book of Revelation says overcome. And uh, so he, he says in chapter 5, uh, they, there's seven seals about something going on in history or whatever. And there's seven seals in this book. And they're on the seals of this book. So this is what he says. I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written on the inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. 
And then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to break its seals? And, and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the book and, and to look into it. And then I began to weep and weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. He says, And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, of the root of David, has overcome so as to open the seal of the book with its seven seals. The lion of the tribe of Judah has opened the seals of the book. He's prevailed. And, and the word that he's overcome, he was Nike, is the Greek word from Nikos, is where we get victory from. He was victorious, Nike over, the, over, the, over the, what's gone on before, and he has prevailed to be victorious. He will open the book for us to hear and to see what is going on. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That's a great title of Jesus. You know the story of the tales of Narnia? Anselm is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And what happened there in his story? He died and rose from the dead, and then he went and beat up on the evil witch uh, and such there. So uh, here the lion of the tribe of Judah has this effect upon history. He opens the seals. You know, there's one other story that just ties in quickly. It was a man named um, Samson. And uh, he had a story with a lion because he was going down the road and uh, doing some things. And uh, a lion jumped out. It was just a young lion. He was able to kill it. And when he killed it, he uh, went on the way. And then he just beat it with his hand. He's a big, strong man. says, the Spirit of God, come on. He killed this lion. A few days later, whatever, maybe weeks, I don't know, he came down the road. And he checked on that lion. And there it was laying there. Just, it was all gone. But there was a carcass, a, a rib cage. And in the rib cage was a nest of bees making honey. So he reached in, he took the honeycomb out, and he started to eat it. And the Bible says this, be nice. The Bible says this, he took some and he gave it to his parents, but he didn't tell them where he got it. And uh, that's in Judges chapter 14 where he did that. And you know what the Bible says in the Hebrew law? They were not allowed to touch a carcass of an animal that had pads on its feet, like a lion or dog or whatever. If it died, you, were, you touch it, you, you were unclean for the day. He not only touched it, he took the honey out, and he didn't dare tell his parents what he had. And he made a riddle out of that lion story. When the guys were trying to figure out what was going on in his life and how come he couldn't figure out his strength, he, uh, he wanted to talk to his wife, and so he made this riddle of what he, where his strength was, and he said, out of this strong came eater. Out of the eater uh, came strength, and out of the eater came sweetness. And he made this riddle, and he couldn't figure out what it was until his wife, because he told her. And he, he said, oh, there's nothing stronger than a lion, and there's nothing sweeter than honey. And that's the tie of the story that you have and Samson says, if you had not dug around and harassed my wife, you'd have never found that out. But we find in the story of Samson's taking honey out of the rib of the carcass of the, uh, the, the rib cage of the lion is a picture. Jesus is the uh, uh, lion of the tribe of Judah. And out of his life and his death and what he did comes nothing but sweetness. The word of God talks about his word. His word is sweeter than honey to, and then the honeycomb. And, and so these pictures that you find as you go through the Bible, lions, the strangest, and there's others I haven't touched on uh, and what, but there's an interesting relationship of lions. The, 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 the king of beasts pictures Jesus, but that king of beasts gave up his life. He's the judge of all the earth, but he dies for the sins of his people. And he's in his life, and somebody portrayed a thing where the disciples are discussing about something, trying to figure out what's going on, and he comes and he says, you guys are debating this? Let me explain it to you. And somebody said, that was such a picture of the sweetness of Jesus. He doesn't want us to be frustrated and can't figure out what's going on in life. He wants us to just come to him, and he sweetly comes alongside of us and meets with us and helps us to know his presence and his love and his power. And as a lion, he can, he can tear down circumstances, and with sweetness he comes and, and uh, meets us in our sourness and whatever. And the sweetest of people, the sourest of people can be made sweet with the help of Jesus in their lives. So that can all happen. So I trust that our hearts will be encouraged. There's a verse in Proverbs 16, um, 24, and I'll close with it, and it says this. And Proverbs 16, 24, and it says about the sweetness of the uh, word of God. And uh, listen to this. He says, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and the healing of bones. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. The word of God is like that. Our words are like that to others. And that's what God wants us to be like.
Thank you. May God bless you and be encouraged in your heart to live for Jesus. He loves you. Gave himself for you. Thank you.